Hello friends, welcome to my channel Technical Arquen, myself Arnab Kundu. Today I will discuss on cache memory. What is cache memory? Now cache memory is a very small and very fast memory which resides between CPU and the primary memory. So I will discuss elaborately about cache memory and also its uses. Okay, so go to the computer screen. Today I will discuss the topic cache memory. Okay. So at first we should know what is cache memory. Cache memory is a special very high speed memory. It is used to speed up and synchronizing with high speed CPU. Right. Cache memory is costlier than main memory or disk memory but economical than CPU registers. Right. Cache memory is an extremely fast memory type that acts as a buffer between RAM and the CPU. Okay? It holds frequently requested data and instructions so that they are immediately available to the CPU when needed. Right? Cache memory is used to reduce the average time to access data from the main memory. The cache is a smaller and fast memory which stores copies of data from frequently used main memory locations, right? There are various different independent caches in a CPU which store instructions and data. So the picture is given that means the cache memory should reside between the processor and the main memory, right? Now we talk about types of cache memory. So specially there are three types of cache memories are there. One is L1, other is L2, and there is an L3. L1 is the first level of cache memory, which is also called level 1 cache. Right? In this type of cache memory, a small amount of memory is present inside the CPU itself. If a CPU has a four cores, means quad core CPU, then each core will have its own level 1 cache. Right? As this memory is present in the CPU, it can work at the same speed as of the CPU. The size of this memory ranges from 2 KB to 64 KB, right? The L1 cache further has two types of caches. One is your instruction cache, which stores instructions required by the CPU. And the, another one is data cache that stores the data required by the CPU. Now another type is L2. This cache is also known as level 2 cache. This level 2 cache may be inside the CPU or outside the CPU. All the cores of a CPU can have their own separate level 2 cache or they can share one L2 cache among themselves. Right? In case it is outside the CPU, it is connected with the CPU with a very high speed bus. The memory size of this cache is in the range of 256 KB to the 512 KB. In terms of speed, they are slower than the L1 cache. Now the last one, which is L3, it is known as level 3 cache. This cache is not present in all the processors. Some high-end processors may have this type of cache, right? This cache is used to enhance the performance of level 1 and level 2 cache. It is located outside the CPU and is shared by all the cores of a CPU. Its memory size ranges from 1 MB to 8 MB, although it is slower than L1 and L2 cache. It is faster than random access memory. Okay. Also, the cache memory have the another two types. One is your primary cache, another is your secondary cache. A primary cache is always located on the processor chip. This cache is small and its access time is comparable to that of processor registers. Right? And secondary cache is placed between the primary cache and the rest of the memory. It is referred to as the level 2 cache. Often the level 2 cache is also housed on the processor chip. Right? Now we talk about cache performance. When the processor needs to read or write a location in main memory, it first checks for a corresponding entry in the cache. Right? If the processor finds that 
the memory location is in the cache, a cache hit has occurred and data is read from cache. If the processor does not find the memory location in the cache, a cache miss has occurred. For a cache miss, the cache allocates a new entry and copies in data from main memory. Then the request is fulfilled from contains of the cache, right? The performance of cache memory is frequently measured in term of a quantity called hit ratio, right? So hit ratio is equal to hit divided by sum of hit plus miss. Also, you can say that number of hits divided by number of accesses, right? Now I talk about types of cache mapping. Actually, there are three different types of mapping used for the purpose of cache memory, which are direct mapping, associative mapping and set associative mapping. So I first discuss direct mapping. Okay, The simplest technique known as direct mapping maps each block of main memory into only one possible cache line or in direct mapping assign each memory block to a specific line in the cache. If a line is previously taken up by a memory block, when a new block needs to be loaded, the old block is trashed and address space is split into two parts, index field and a tag field, right? The cache is used to store the tag field, whereas the rest is stored in the main memory. Direct mappings performance is directly proportional to the heat ratio. The following two images provide the direct mapping of cache memory, right? Now we talk about associative mapping. In this type of mapping, the associative memory is used to store contain and addresses of the memory word. Any block can go into any line of the cache. This means that the word ID bits are used to identify which word in the block is needed, but the tag becomes all of the remaining bits, right? This enables the placement of any word at any place in the cache memory. It is considered to be the fastest and the most flexible mapping form. The following image provide associative mapping of cache memory, right? Now we talk about another type of cache mapping, which is set associative mapping. This form of mapping is an enhanced form of direct mapping where the drawbacks of direct mapping are removed. Set associative addresses, the problem of possible thrashing in the direct mapping method, right? It does this by saying that instead of having exactly one line that a block can map to in the cache, we will group a few lines together creating a set. Okay, Then a block in memory can map to any one of the lines of a specific set. Okay, Set associative mapping allows that each word that is present in the cache can have two or more words in the main memory for the same index address, right? Set associative cache mapping combines the best of direct and associative cache mapping techniques, right? The following two images provide set associative mapping of cache memory, right? Now we talk about the application of the cache memory. Usually, the cache memory can store a reasonable number of blocks at any given time, but this number is small compared to the total number of blocks in the main memory. Okay, The correspondence between the main memory blocks and those in the cache is specified by a mapping function. Okay, So the following picture is provided that the cache memory just resides between the CPU and the primary memory. Okay. Now we talk about locality of reference, right? Since size of cache memory is less as compared to main memory, okay? So to check which part of main memory should be given priority and loaded in cache is decided based on locality of reference, okay? 
so basically there are two types of locality of reference of cache memory is there okay one is spatial locality of reference and that is temporal locality of reference okay at first we discuss the spatial locality of reference okay this says that there is a chance that element will be present in the close proximity to the reference point and next time if again searched then more close proximity to the point of reference right and for the case of temporal locality of reference in this least recently used algorithm will be used okay whenever there is page fault occurs within a word will not only load word in main memory but complete page fault will be loaded because spatial locality of reference rule says that if you are referring any word next word will be referred in its register that is why we load complete page table so the complete block will be loaded okay cache memory also called cache a supplementary memory system that temporarily stores frequently used instructions and data for quicker processing by the central processor of a computer right the cache arguments and is an extension of a computer's main memory both main memory and cache are internal random access memories means the rams that use semiconductor based transistor circuits cache holds a copy of only the most frequently used information or program code stored in the main memory okay the smaller capacity of the cache reduces the time required to locate data within it and provide it to the computer for processing okay i hope that you have understood today's topic for more videos keep watching my channel technical arquen thank you and bye bye